Hi friends and welcome back to installment number nine of Professor Pastor Paul's Midweek Bible Festival. This Sunday is Pentecost, the day that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to the early church as described so very vividly in Acts 2. That story, you will remember, tells how when the disciples were gathered together after Jesus had ascended, a great wind from heaven entered the house where they were and swept them up into such great fervor that some bystanders thought they were drunk. But no, it was not wine, but the Spirit that filled them that day, and they began to speak in many languages each speaking a different language, and together those languages covered the known world. One spirit, many languages. They were unified and diverse at the same time. David will say more about this story on Sunday. It's the first and most well-known story of the Pentecost. And David, like I said, will say a little bit about it. You have a lot to look forward to, friends. But this is, of course, not the only place in Scripture that speaks of the Holy Spirit. In fact, did you know it's not the only Pentecost story? In the Gospel of John, you know, John, the fourth gospel, which differs so much from the others, the Spirit arrives in the evening of the first Easter, long before the ascension of Jesus. In fact, in John, it's Jesus himself that announces the arrival of the Holy Spirit. That story is found in John 20 and goes like this. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive now the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Thus did the Holy Spirit arrive according to John. Now the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, plays a major role throughout the New Testament. Paul, for example, talks constantly of the Spirit. Here he is from 1 Corinthians 12. This is Paul speaking, writing rather. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit of utterances of wisdom, and to another the utterances of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one Spirit and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Here, Paul in 1 Corinthians echoes a theme we already saw in Acts, a diversity of voices unified and animated by a single spirit, or in this case, in the case of Paul, a diversity of gifts given 
and unified and animated by a single Holy Spirit. Is it not a relief to know that no matter what your gift is, what our gifts are, they can be used by the Spirit. They're gifts of the Spirit and are used by the Spirit. We all contribute. I contribute. You contribute. And the more gifts and the more voices we have, the stronger we are as the body of Christ, the more creative we can be, the more we can help one another, and the more complete and true we can be as a witness to the world. Teachers, prophets, healers, behind-the-scenes workers, deacons, greeters, musicians, the list goes on. Without the single spirit, we would be nothing. With it, we are the body of Christ. So this Sunday, when we celebrate Pentecost, we are celebrating the unity of the Spirit, but we are also celebrating our diversity of gifts and voices. Gifts, languages, voices, so many of each, but only one Spirit that unites us. Now, the Spirit makes some showings in the Old Testament as well. There it goes by a number of names. In the New Testament, it shows up as uh, the Greek is, uh, is pneuma, as a pneumatic uh, air, uh, pneuma wind, wind and, and spirit, same word, pneuma, that's the Greek. In the Old Testament, it shows up as ruach, R-U-A-C-H, ruach. And uh, there also it means spirit or wind. So it shows up in both Testaments. And in the Old Testament, in many places, it is called the Spirit of God. For example, in 2 Samuel, David says the Spirit of the Lord speaks through him. And in the Psalms, David begs God not to remove his spirit, God's spirit, from him. And Micah writes that he was filled by the Spirit of God. And Moses, in one of this week's lectionary readings, that David, I think David will mention this, Uh, There's a funny passage where Moses wishes that the Spirit of God would go ahead and fall on all the Israelites so he could have a little help. I think Moses was getting a little tired of the one-on-one with God and the Spirit of God. I think he was at some point quite tired and thought it'd be really nice if everybody could have the same connection, everybody could prophesy, everybody could do what was right in the sight of the Lord because he was getting a little tired of managing those people. He was a little weary of the leadership work and the intense one-on-one face time with God. In some places in the Old Testament, the Spirit is actually called the Holy Spirit. Isaiah wrote, for example, that the parent people's rebellion grieved the Holy Spirit. Now, it is generally understood by Christians that the Spirit, whether holy or God's Spirit, and I believe there's a couple other names by which it shows up, it's always Spirit, Um, The Spirit in the Old Testament is the same as the Spirit that arrives in Pentecost. That Spirit of God becomes indwelling in us. When Jesus instructs his disciples in the end of Matthew to go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Jesus did that. He said so in continuity with the Old Testament understanding of the Spirit of God. But the first time the Spirit shows up in the Bible is in its very second verse, Genesis 1-2. Here's 1-1 through 1-3, and see if you can spot where the Spirit of God comes in, where the Holy Spirit might come in. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. There it is. In chapter 1, verse 2, second verse of the Bible, a wind from God swept over the face. The word for wind is ruach. It's the same as the word for spirit. The spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and so forth and so on. So right up in there in front, the very first creative act of God was to breathe over the face of the waters, that is, the face of chaos. In the Israelite imagination, in their cosmology, water was the symbol of primordial chaos. So the wind sweeping over the chaos 
was there to bring order to the chaos. It was creative. That's what creativity is. It's about bringing order from chaos. This wind, this breath, this ruach, this spirit is the spirit of God. It is a creating and sustaining wind, one that makes all good things and creation itself possible. From that point onward in Genesis 1, the spirit draws out of the chaotic waters a most complex and beautiful order. Over the chapter, the spirit is seen to create and to create again. Day and night, dry land and waters, moon, sun and stars, plants of field and wood, beasts of the sea, beasts of the land, beasts of the air, one after another in a dazzling multiplication of forms. This is the work of the spirit. Creation is a work of the spirit. And when you and I create, even in the smallest way, that too is a work of the spirit. And of course, human beings were made as well by the spirit of God in Genesis 1. So we see here again the same theme, one single spirit creating and animating and sustaining a bewildering variety of created beings. In Acts, we see one spirit and many voices. In 1 Corinthians, we see, we find one spirit and many gifts. And in Genesis, we encounter one spirit and many creatures, many forms, living forms and otherwise. It was all created by the Holy Spirit. In all three cases, there is the one and there are the many. There is unity in diversity and diversity in unity. And the very same spirit of creation is evidenced in Psalm 104, which we read just a few weeks ago and which part of which I'll read again. The same Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the breath of God, the creative act of God is evidenced in Psalm 104 which goes like this. This is just part of it. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, when you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. But, and listen close friends, when you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. So again, we see the creative spirit, one spirit, many forms. So in Acts, one spirit, many voices, many languages. In Corinthians, one spirit, many gifts. Here in the Psalms and in Genesis 1, one spirit, many creatures. Friends, this Pentecost week, may the spirit be with you. May the Holy Spirit be with you. And in the weeks to come, animating and sustaining you and creating in you a new heart daily. Amen.